Yes, indeed. Greetings, and Monica is here, and Erica, hello. 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 So glad you're here. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you all. Thanks for inviting me. Fantastic. And Jennifer, hello. Hello, thank you. Yes, it was really exciting to get your email. So thank you so much for organizing this. <laughs> sure. Jennifer, it's good to see you. It's been a while. A long while, you as well. Since I've seen your face. <laughs> the whole world has changed. Yeah. Bill McCarthy's on? I just can't believe it. Hello, oh, Bill. Uh, am I Lynn? Hello. And Ava's on? i just waiting to hear her voice. All right. And Renor? Yay, Renor. Hello, everyone. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Let's gather. And Tom? Hello, Tom. Good morning. I keep hearing the, the bell ringing. Great. Wonderful. Hello, Robert. <laughs> hey, David. Robert from Boulder Creek in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Good to see you. You too. Good Hello, to Deborah. see you. Deborah, good morning. Oh, wonderful. We've got 31 people here. Fantastic. Hey, Tony. Nice to see you. <laughs> Hi, Joni. Hi, Joni. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Good little Joni. This is fantastic. What a gathering. Well, welcome everyone, and we're going to go ahead and uh, begin as we have a, um, a lot to cover and a lot of people to hear from. So, uh, Avon, would you please begin us? He's still muted, David. Now she's oh, here. welcome everyone. My heart is so very, very full as I see every one of your faces and your names. It's just so many memories come flooding back um, of all the ways that each of you has contributed so very much to Pathways to Peace. Pathways to Peace is just, it's, it's all of us together contributing our special gifts that each of us brings, our experiences, our wisdom. Um, our particular pathway, but everyone here on this call and so many others have contributed over the past four decades to, excuse the outside noise, <laughs> to, to, um, to the various aspects of our service. And so I just want to extend a deep, deep bow of love and gratitude to every single one of you. <clears throat> so deeply moved. Oh, I wish I could just, we could just hear from each of you and just have you talk for so long, but we're going to have a chance to have a second opportunity for everyone to share on another call. But I just um, want to say that, that this gathering is so important at this particular time because community means more than ever at this time of the intersection of so many different crises and we're called together at another level of cooperation and service and shared wisdom. And so this call is dedicated, dedicated to that today. And uh, because we want to go as, as directly, as quickly as possible into, um, into our, the rest of our meeting today, our gathering, um, I just want to um, imagine that we're all in a sacred circle with each other and just focus our attention in our hearts and just allow us to be, you know, breathing in that present moment in and out through our hearts of just 
the joy of being together in this sacred circle at this very important time for humanity and for our beloved common home, Earth Gaia. And just to, uh, as we focus on our hearts, imagine that we're just gathering around this sort of the sacred fire of peace that we're continuing to recognize that personal and planetary peace are inseparable. George. Local and Join the meeting. That we are recognizing that personal and planetary peace are inseparable, that local and global peace are inseparable, and that every thought, word, and action of peace is making an extraordinary difference in ways that we have contributed and all of you have contributed over all these many, many years and decades and that are contributing now as we gather and into the future. And just a, a small quote from the uh, last phase of the mantra of unification. Let vision come and insight, let the future stand revealed. Let our inner peace, our innate peace be revealed and may together we are shaping peace together. That aspect has to do with the, the theme of the United Nations of shaping peace together for the countdown to Peace Day, the 38th annual Peace Day. And just to conclude, just a quote about the significance of peace building and of each one of you and of what you contributed to this field and continue to do so. This is a quote from Nicholas Rorick. Positive creativeness is the fundamental quality of the human spirit. Let us welcome all those who surmounting personal difficulties propel their spirits to the task of peace building, thus ensuring a radiant future for the well-being of all. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you very much, Avon. And I, my name is David Witt. I'm a director of Pathways and have been for many, long, uh, many, many years. Welcome. And this is fantastic that we're all together in this very important time in our history and, and our personal evolution that we're all going through. And as peace builders, we continue to move forward with our inspiration and bringing the greater consciousness in all the different ways that we do, which is really quite amazing. And <clears throat> the purpose today is to come together, to meet each other, to see each other. It's also inspired by younger members <clears throat> that are engaged with Pathways to say, who is part of Pathways and where, who are these people and what have they done? And, and so that's part of the inspiration here is to see each other hear a bit about from each other <clears throat> what the, you know, what we're doing, what the, you know, the receiving pathways over time. And it also sets the stage for part two. So I wanted to let you know, we have many people here, <clears throat> which is fantastic. And uh, part two is gonna be Friday, the 21st, of essentially the week from uh, this, this week, the 21st, same time, 9.30, uh, 9.30 to uh, 11, we're going to have more time to engage in your, your, your inspirations, what you're doing, and suggestions for Pathways. So we're going to do, this is an introduction uh, process right now. So <clears throat> this morning, what we're going to do the introduction, you're going to have a chance right now to introduce yourselves, um, how, what you know, how you know, how you connect with Pathways, and what the difference is Pathways is made in your life. Just a very brief comment about that. We're going to talk about Pathways background history, some of the things that we're doing currently today, and then coming back to you and some of the uh, suggestions input for strategic planning. Pathways engaging in, and then we'll move to conclusion. Um, in the chat box, uh, Tezekiah has identified her email so that you have suggestions, you have resources, you have information you want to be sharing 
One is to put your information in the chat box here, but you can also send email to that address, tesdatpathwayspeace.org, where we can gather more of your contact, your information, your suggestions there also. So let us uh, proceed. And again, just as a short a minute introduction, we have 38 people on the call, which is fantastic. This is great. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Deeply honored that you're here. So <clears throat> just your name, um, how you're connected with Pathways, and how the Pathways made a difference uh, in your life. What we're looking for is a, about a minute, so it's very short, but this is the introduction, like I said. So um, I'll just say, uh, David Wick and I've <clears throat> been with Pathways from the very beginning, and Pathways has served as a major part of my life and my part of service in the world. Um, it's kind of been my spiritual home and spiritual service um, to bring help bring greater peace building into the world. And it's just been a grounding point throughout my 40 years here. So, so next person, let's just move right into it. Don't hesitate to step forward and we'll, we'll help to facilitate that. So um, how about, let's just go to, to uh, uh, Tezakaya. Hello, I'm Tezakaya Gabriel. I'm the Executive Director of Pathways to Peace. And I actually uh, responded to what was called to come into Pathways to Peace. And so for the past um, almost four years, I've been working uh, with Pathways to Peace to advance our mission. And um, that has been ultimately satisfying to me. I am a peace builder in my heart of hearts. And so bringing that commitment through an organization that has the history, the credibility, and the opportunity that Pathways to Peace has has been pure joy and a delight. Thank you. So how about I just go right across what I'm seeing in the screen here, Marilyn. Good. I'm mute, Marilyn. I'm mute. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Marilyn King. I'm a two-time Olympian, and because Pathways made a mistake, I got involved back in 1984 when Pathways was doing the first um, Peace Day celebration in San Francisco, and they wanted an Olympian. And they contacted me because they wanted Bruce Jenner. They wanted a high visibility gold medalist. <laughs> they got me instead. And um, I am eternally grateful, first of all, for this reunion because I need to be with my tribe right now. Uh, so thank you for that. And the primary thing that uh, Pathways did, does for me is, you know, introduce me to an international community of people who've been working globally and systemically gave me opportunities to speak at the United Nations, to be involved with global systemic change agents. So uh, I am forwarding something called the Peace Team and focused on Oakland the next four years. And I look forward to sharing more of that at the appropriate time. Great, welcome, welcome. Great right across. The gentleman from um, J-U-W-E, please. Yes. Um, my name is Harrison Jewell, for short, sure, Harry, Harry. Um, I'm especially grateful to Eva for bringing us into this peace work and um, allowing us, giving us the privilege to um, represent Pathways to Peace in the United Nations uh, in Geneva. And that was a big opportunity for us and particularly for me, because um, it enabled me to to um, to marry the work we do esoterically uh, in Akin School to to be able to apply it to a wider a wider audience. It enabled us to bring energy down from the soul level to the human level, where we saw all the difficulties, you know, all the problems of humanity. And then we saw actually the, the need for right human relations in, uh, 
uh, which which was portrayed and which continues to be portrayed through Geneva. And um, okay, that one is one, and uh, it enabled us also to to be able to inter to interact with our people in Nigeria and be able to introduce the work of peace, right human relations to our people uh, without um, uh, recourseing to uh, very big esoteric uh, words. So it has, been, it has been practical for us and uh, we're very grateful it's an opportunity and uh, we aim to carry it forward. Wonderful. Thank you very much, and welcome, welcome. Let's move to Paul Lind. Linden. Hi. I, um, I do something very different, I think, than most of you, and I haven't had much contact with Pathways to Peace, but I would like to contribute. The place that I go is fear and anger are the basis for prejudice, sexism, hatred, and the ability to cause people pain without feeling it yourself when you do that. And it's in the body that that happens. Emotions and, and spirit are in the body. They are the body. And it, you have to have ways of constructing uh, a state of compassion, power, and awareness. And on that foundation, be able to start making some steps towards peace. As a personal example, I've had Parkinson's for 17 years. I'm still functional because of these practices that I do, that I've developed out of my 50 years of Aikido practice. And for those of you who don't understand how a martial art can be a peacemaking process, you have to have enemies to practice with so you can get over wanting to hit the suckers. You have to meet them with compassion and kindness. And you can experience in the martial art of Aikido that that enables you to, to move much better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. And glad you're here. Thank you. Maya Porter, hello. Hi. Um, I was involved with what was called PV21 back in 99 and 2000 and have not had any connection with the group since. So I only know a couple of you. Sarah Van Gelder, hi. <laughs> um, I'm Quaker and as a Quaker, of course, I've been involved in peace activities forever. So, uh, but mostly on the local level, um, not so much uh, with, with larger groups or the national level. Um, I'll quit there and give the rest of you more time. Great. Wonderful to see you. Thank you. And um, Fred, Cesaro. Uh, yes, hi, Avon. Uh, I met Avon in 1995, and uh, I had the chance to work on the uh, uh, centerpiece film for the uh, Charter of the United Nations, and then went on from there to work on 14 more films uh, for the United Nations on global issues. and. Uh, the impact and the connection with Avon and, and your organization is um, lasting. Uh, I'm here today to say hello again and uh, to listen and, and to hopefully share in, in the work. But I'm very happy to be here. Wonderful. Thank you. Welcome. And uh, Wendy Gull. I'm Wendy Gull. Thank you, David. Um, yes. <laughs> long time. Really? <laughs> um, I don't even know the date when we began uh, to, when we met each other, but I think it was in the early 90s. Yes. Um, and I just feel long time close sister friend uh, with uh, Pathways to Peace and Avon. And I work with uh, First Peace Community Circles. Uh, First Peace meaning let's uh let's open up to how we live in peace in the self and then that's gonna ripple out so uh and we've woven our past together um yeah since then and there's been many memorable events uh one was the 50th anniversary of the united nations that uh, we got to participate in and uh and i'm so grateful avon for our long-term friendship, allyship, uh, sisterhood, uh, and uh, thank you for all you do. Mm -hmm. Those are my words. Beautiful. Thank you, Indigo. And um, Katie Tarr. Hi, I'm Katie. 
Um, I've been with Pathways for about a year now. Um, currently, I'm doing um, a lot of the social media, working on their Instagram, um, Twitter pages. If you have either, definitely come follow us. Um, and we have face our Facebooks up and running as well. Um, you know, I got into Pathways thank from um, Operation Peace Through Unity about a year ago when we were working on the youth side event. Um, and I mean, it's just been a great opportunity for me to be able to represent Pathways. Unfortunately, obviously, with COVID, I haven't had the chance to attend much at the UN this year. Um, but, you know, getting to go and experience the um, Holocaust Remembrance at the beginning of the year was definitely a huge highlight for me. Um, and it was just such a rewarding moment. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, being as involved as humanly possible and just, you know, continuing to represent Pathways. Beautiful. Thank you. Welcome. And Emma, please. Hi, I'm Emma DVAs. I am a uh, high schooler at Modern Day Prep. Um, I got into Pathways by Mr. Anthony. Um, I've been going to the UN uh, since seventh grade, and I've been in part of, in part of Pathways since seventh grade. Uh, this year, my freshman year, I was grateful to go to one of the church meetings on November 20th and take part of the Pathways to Peace um, ceremony. Beautiful. Glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you. And Barbara Mueller, long time. Thank you. I have so much to thank Avon for. I met Robert Mueller in 1994, and Avon and Robert had created the International Day of Peace, and I didn't know Avon at all, but I went to San Francisco, and she said, welcome, sister. At that moment, I felt like she had welcomed the world to me, and for this day on, I cannot thank Avon enough, because Robert and I spent 17 years traveling the world for peace, and now I am working with David Wick on Rotary E Club of World Peace, and I invite you to join us on the Peace Podcast, where Marilyn King has been featured, where we just did Ben Ferenz, who is a 100-year-old survivor, I call him, of courage, the man who did the Nuremberg tribal, trials, who said law is all we have to count on. David, I thank you for calling us together. Ava and I wish you the very best. And it's so wonderful to see so many of my friends. Joni and all of you, I love you. <laughs> wonderful. Great. Thank you, Barbara. What are the spark plugs? Um, Kim Michael. Thank you, David, and everybody for bringing us together. It's so important to be in a sense of community now, as Avon shared. You know, I really hunger for this, and Pathways has been such a deep part of my heart. I have a long and rich connection with Pathways. I was on the board for a period of time, and then, like Tez, I sort of felt the call to become its executive director, which was such a joy to work closely with dear Avon and to really get more deeply connected with the work of Pathways, the UN, and the International Day of Peace. Uh, and then later, um, Sanko Banda, who's been a longtime board member, and I started a project of Pathways called the Institute for Peace Building, where we went into schools and churches and taught conflict resolution courses for teachers and students and others, and that was just so rich. And now in the last 10 years, I've been in the Washington, D.C. area carrying the, the love and the work of Pathways in so many ways here in the nation's capital, which so needs this work. And so I have many personal connections with each of you, and uh, so it's very meaningful to, to be here and to celebrate the extraordinary work of Pathways and the vision of our dear Avon. Beautiful, thank you, Kim. And uh, Robert, did you leave? Robert Browning left a message, he had to leave. Were you still here, Robert? And I guess not, did Robert? No, David, he left a message, he left a message for everyone in the chat box for, to share. Right, Robert and Cheva are also on our board of directors and, and directors of Pathways. Um, and, and they're, uh, they're doing a special training for the American Red Cross um, and they're helping those who are on the front lines at this moment. Right, 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 okay. So, uh, Deborah Green. Hi, Deborah. there, sorry, I was um, muted. Good to yeah. see so many familiar faces and wonderful to uh, 
I'm looking forward to meeting everybody else here. Um, I've been called to the work with Pathways, I would say, for over 20 years. I've been uh, so enamored with AVEN and, um, and have been on this journey for a long time. I've been working more directly with Pathways, specifically over the last uh, two and a half, almost three years with TES. Um, my background is, and you know, and I'm being called to work in the avenue of kind of rebranding of peace so that it's a conversation that people can get at more easily and also peace technologies. So over the last several years, it's been an honor. Uh, I have been involved with everything from creating and working on the emerging youth, transforming humanity to um, things with the commissions on the status of women, uh, have worked with students in um, uh, over MLK weekend, have videos that we've created and working with Georgia's students, um, and also really looking at how to uh, help shift the brand of pathways so that we can grow this greater. And um, there are also a number of uh, programs that we've been working on, uh, specifically everything that I've been doing over the last couple of years have been, has been around trying to hold up AVEN's work and Pathways to Peace. And we'll talk more about the programs in a little bit as far as the Peace Wave and My Mask is for You and how we can build technologies that will uh, move the wave of peace forward in the way that AVEN has started so beautifully so many years ago. Wonderful, thank you, thank you. And um, Joni Cardelli, who's co-founder with AVEN of Pathways, way back. Joni, you're, you're muted. Sorry about that. Thank you, David and Avon and all. It is such a joy to see you. Some of the old timers I haven't seen in many, many years from all over the world. Wow, um, I'm so grateful. And um, I was there with Avon when we founded Pathways to Peace and uh, participated in the first annual International Day of Peace ceremony in San Francisco. And over the years, I was a director for many years. And uh, now I'm engaged in uh, working on the documentation of the history of Pathways to Peace and um, hoping that our local university will provide an intern to work with us on that. And uh, still serving as an advisor and deeply involved in um, whatever I can do to help forward peace on earth and in our hearts. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Joni. Great to see you. And another deep, um, uh, long time uh, peace building colleague, Paul Coleman. Hi, we're uh, all in Konomi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've been keeping a low profile recently because we're down in Patagonia creating a, an organic farm and life. Uh, as far as Pathways to Peace, Avon, I've known for, as we say, donkey's years in Britain, decades, and uh, increasingly since 1993, while I was living in a redwood tree and planning all sorts of things to do with the 50th anniversary of the United Nations and the 25th anniversary of Earth Day. And around about that time, Avon invited me to become a, an ambassador to the We the People's Initiative. And it was right before I was walking to Sarajevo, where I went to plant a tree in the war. So being a, an, an ambassador to uh, uh, this peace, me peace messenger initiative enabled me greatly to spread my message. And along the way, uh, I continued walking around the planet, planting trees for what I call peace and ecological restoration. So it is this intricate connection with Avon, Pathways to Peace, Joni, David, all these wonderful people that I'm seeing from decades ago <laughs> that uh, um, I've been able to ad advance, um, you know, what I've been doing on this planet. And uh, I'm very, very grateful to have this opportunity to be here today. Uh, we are now, as I say, just coming back into the outside world and we're planning something from here for the International Day of Peace. And I'm just absolutely delighted to, to, to see everybody and be a part of this again. And um, if we had more than a minute, I think Konomi would have quite a few things to say too. 
Well, well, thank you. Well, real quickly. Oh, yeah. If yes, you want to say hello, very quick. <laughs> yes, hi, my name is Konomi. I'm, um, I'm with Paul for 15 years now, and I, I met Paul in Japan when he was working, and then I wrote a book about his journey, his life, and published in, in Japan. I'm an author. And um, yes, I am very happy to be here with everyone as a very difficult time, but as I, everybody probably recognized, this is a great opportunity to transform everyone from our heart and the planet. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Well, well wonderful. All right, let's go to uh, Violin. Hi. Really great to see familiar faces and I'm familiar with a lot of your names and love you, Avon. Um, I met Avon at a James O'Day book uh, event and then eventually became her assistant, which was a huge honor and opened my heart and able to go to the UN and support pathways uh, in an administrative way and a loving way. I moved out of the area and um, now am with the Peace and Justice Center and we just, uh, and with the Meta Peace Team out of Michigan, we just had to cancel our trip to Palestine uh, as a peacekeeping keeping team in support of the Palestines, Palestinians. So, um, okay, so great to be here and feel rekindled and sending much love. Great, thank you. Glad that you're here. So let's go to a telephone number, uh, the 732 Eight nine five one five three zero. Hello. Hi, David George Anthony, United Nations. Hi, uh, George. Anthony. Wonderful. Hi. Hi. I'm driving into New York City, so I'm having a bit. You know, I'm I'm doing sort of a multitasking here. But um, just want to say, uh, wonderful to be amongst this group. I am a solidified disciple of David Madison who is one of the most extraordinary human beings I've ever known and I've uh, been working with Avon for the past few years, working with Tez, and uh, it's been an extraordinary group. Uh, my focus is working mostly with young people, bringing them into the, um, the paradigm of peace building. Uh, I believe that their heart, their passion is extraordinary. Uh, Emma is up and coming. Uh, I've been working with Caitlin Grano, Elizabeth Sheridan. Uh, so we are focused on primarily conflict resolution, peace building, um, and creating that change uh, we all wish our, our students to be. And uh, I'm in a great place. This is where I'm supposed to be, working with such an extraordinary group. Um, if you want to see some of our work, you can visit us at Prep for Peace, which was a wonderful partnership with Pathways for Peace, where we are working on an educational toolkit. And now we look forward to working with Deborah for the uh, 2021 season on My Mask is for You. Uh, so uh, it's a great group to be in, and, and uh, thank you for bringing such beautiful energy uh, to a world that truly needs it. So uh, bless you all. Beautiful. Thank you. Great to hear you. <laughs> George has done amazingly. And speaking of young people, how about Elizabeth? <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I am an alumni of George Anthony's Global Leader Program that is based out of Modern Day Prep in New Jersey. Coming out of that, I was just became a youth representative for Pathways to Peace, and I am so blessed to be able to represent all of you and work with you in the future. Um, in regards to my experience, I was a presenter at the Commission for the Status of Women on the Historical Woman. I'm one of the student founders of the Educational Toolkit, and I have assisted in multiple conflict resolution trainings, both at the United Nations and its affiliates. I'm just very happy to be able to have the chance to work with all of you, and I look forward to working with you in the future so that we can do great things for Pathways to Peace. Thank you. Delighted to have you. Thank you very much. It's a great contributor moving ahead. And then there's Renar. 
another wonderful young person. Well, namaste, everyone. Uh, first, I want to say that it is a true blessing to be present with all of you at this moment in time. I have been serving as a youth representative for Pathways to Peace since August of 2018 and as an official UN Echo Soccer Credit representative since August of 2019. Currently, I am working closely with some of our PTP and UN colleagues on objectives such as nuclear disarmament and abolition, advancing refugee rights and protections, and also raising awareness on alternative adolescent mental health care. Um, at the moment, PTP, uh, the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation, and Peace Boat USA are organizing an intergenerational conference on nuclear disarmament and, and advancing the Treaty of the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which is the first legally binding treaty that officially bans all nuclear weapon maintenance and production in every country that ratifies it. We are currently expanding our committee and are welcoming, welcoming any new potential members and organizations. But what I can say is that um, it's truly been an enlightening and an evolutionary experience working within Pathways to Peace. Um, I, I, I will say that I feel we have arrived at a nexus that is calling our PTP family and humanity at large higher. And it's a call that involves us working as one pulse beyond our comfortability and complacency. So uh, the dominoes containing each moment of our lives, I feel have, have led each one of us to this moment right here, this moment that we share right now. And what I know for sure is that this day will never come again. So for that, uh, I am very grateful. And what I mean is, uh, I mean it in, in a literal sense where this day that we have right now, today, August 12th, uh, we'll never have again. So that's why I'm very grateful to be here in a constructive manner with all of you in going to the next level. Um, and uh, I just wanna say that I'm committed to being part of the organizational effort to work collectively to achieve this. And I'm committed to adjusting my work patterns and capacities for better cohesion. Uh, what, a timely, what a timely meeting to have on International Youth Day as well. Uh, I think it's really, it's really nice to have an intergenerational uh, cohesion, which is important. So I thank each one of you for your presence, for your sharing. And I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm grateful beyond what I can even express to you. So thank you all, and namaste. Namaste, and thank you, Lenor. Your, your guidance is, is coming along here. And so let us move to uh, the Sabi, and welcome. Hello, the Sabi, you, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Hello, my name is Betsy Bayrena. Um, I've been a Pathways to Peace representative since 2017. Um, right now, I'm currently working on a project uh, along with Renor and Johnny, um, basically centered around uh, refugee rights and the advancement of refugee rights and just um, putting together, um, we're still currently putting together a uh, what our future of this project will will currently be due to the pandemic uh, the pandemic has unfortunately changed so many of our of, of what we wanted but um, we believe in divine timing and so you know taking it step by step is is <laughs> what we have to do um, as far as pathways to peace goes um, to me pathways to peace has brought so, uh, a kind of revival um, in the sense of seeing a group of people come together. Um, since I was young, I was doing a lot of um, mission work, a lot of humanitarian aid work all over the world. Um, usually it was always, you know, uh, communities of that, that, you know, are vulnerable, but I kind of shifted into um, 
I, w I don't want to say by chance because I don't, I don't always believe that. I believe that we have a calling. Um, but I kind of shifted into refugee work. And so um, PTP has brought that kind of revival and seeing a group of come, um, come together for different causes. And it's given me encouragement um, and allowed me to say yes to everything that was in front of me in regards to refugee crisis and refugee work. Um, my vision, I mean, I'm so grateful to be here right now to see all of these faces that I've always read about, heard about, and I, and I, you know, I couldn't put a face to the names. And so I'm super grateful to be here. And I just expect from now on, and I hope uh, to see all of us come together and be this giant international task force um, for peace. Um, you know, until eternity. So I'm super grateful to, to be here and see Pathways to Peace grow and come together yet again. And that's all. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for being part of this the evolution. And speaking of evolution and intergenerational, Boomi. Hello, everyone. Thank you, David. And I, I see a lot of familiar faces and all my new friends here and Joni such so good to see you and Konomi hello and Paul and wow Wind Eagle um I'm my heart is full because uh we've traveled with Pathways to Peace for many decades um I'm executive director of May Peace Prevail on Earth International it used to be called the World Peace Prayer Society. We um, changed our names three years ago. Now, May Peace Prevail on Earth International. And we were uh, originally out of Japan. And I was in Japan um, working at the office there. And uh, it was time to flap our wings and go international. It was, it was such a small, um, uh, organization then in Japan and it was the International Year of Peace but even before then I started writing letters uh, remember the uh, days of writing letters <laughs> and we wrote letters and Avon was one of the first people who responded to the letter I don't know where we got the name Pathways to Peace but we wrote and said we wanted to establish you know, friendly relations, this is what we do. She was the first person. So that was our start of a long three and a half decades, I think, of a relationship with Pathways. Pathways has been uh, our anchor, our guardian, our wise counsel in so many ways. Um, Pathways has changed the path of May Peace Prevail on Earth uh, International all along the way. So, and you know how Avon is so humble that she will not, you know, come out and say how much she has affected or had an impact on the peace building community. I mean, she's, she's the leader, she's the master in my, in my world and done so much to uplift us and especially, you know, globally in other continents guided and counsel people. And I know she's still doing that. This is amazing work that Pathways has done. And truly the, this year's um, theme of the UN International Day of Peace, Shaping Peace Together, this is what Pathways does, shaping us all together in, in walking the road of peace together. So, you know, I can't say enough about Pathways, such an impact, to, in, to my personal life, as well as, you know, the life of so many of us here. So, infinite gratitude, and may peace prevail on earth. Beautiful. Yes, and thank you, Fumi. Fumi is, is one of the people who also brings a peace ball all around the world, and we've had some major celebrations. So, <laughs> blessings. It's great to see you. And what comes to mind is Monica Willard. Monica, where are you? Monica is still here. I saw her earlier. Okay, let us um, move ahead. Um, how about um, David Hazen? 
Hi. My name is David Hazen, and I met Avon in 2012. I tracked her down and asked her to be interviewed on video, which is now a series of videos on the uh, Pathways to Peace uh, YouTube channel, uh, a series called The History of the International Day of Peace. I also am part of the International Cities of Peace Initiative. Um, I'm just a few hours north of Ashland and David Wick, and we've had exchanges back and forth of what are you doing and how are you doing it. I've also been a uh, campaigner for the U.S. Department of Peace through the Peace Alliance. And uh, I'm associated with the Meta Center for Nonviolence. I participate in their weekly calls, um, which come very close. Uh, they're, they originate out of Petaluma, which is not far from where you are in the headquarters there. Um, I've written a couple of books about nonviolence, uh, Love Always Wins, and a workbook called The Work of Love. And um, that's it for me. Great. Wonderful to see you, David. Thank you very much. Bill McCarthy, another intergenerational person. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it's a pleasure to be here. And I see so many friends, Kim Weichel and Joni, of course, and then um, Barbara and David. And, you know, I've been fortunate to know Avon since I think 1986, if I remember correctly, when there was the, uh, the, the walk for UNICEF. But we started working really closely together for the 50th anniversary of the UN and have been working closely ever since. Um, my organization, Unity Foundation, most specifically works on media. And we uh, promote the International Day of Peace through an international broadcast that streams live from the UN every September 21st. Uh, we also have a television show that pre presents positive news from around the world, including what peacemakers are doing all over the world. So those are our contributions that we make, uh, you know, and in close relationship with Avon, my dear sister, and with David Wick uh, for many, many years. And uh, we just love the communication, we love the relationship, and we just want it to get stronger and stronger. Beautiful. Thank you, Bill. And Bill and his organization has beamed out peace building around the world continuously. Amazing, amazing work. So thank you, Bill, for all that thank you do. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, let's go to Sarah Van Gelder. It's great to see you. Hi. Hello, David. Uh, Let's see, I'm living near Seattle. Uh, I think the thing that I would highlight that especially was meaningful to me about connecting with Pathways to Peace is the inspiration I got from so many of you all and other people through gatherings that we used to have. Uh, so much that was around the time that we were founding Yes Magazine and the people I met and the, the lessons and the inspiration that was, that was really foundational to some of the content that we included in, in Yes over the years. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, since then, in, a, in addition to, um, to editing Yes Magazine, I took a road trip around the U United States uh, to learn about mainly the intersection, if you will, of peace and justice especially climate justice, racial justice, and economic justice, and how different communities around the U.S. have found ways of bringing those principles into the core of who they are and, and what they're about. Uh, so I wrote a book about that called The Revolution Where You Live, and then was inspired by what I learned from all of those communities to start a training group called People's Hub, where people are able to share what they have learned about those things with other people to do trainings uh, for local activists. Right now, I'm with uh, I'm working for a local tribe, the Suquamish tribe, which is the uh, uh, tribe of Chief Seattle, uh, working in their communications 
and uh, working on helping to navigate this uh, extraordinary period that we're in, um, in terms of both the threats of, of this uh, horrendous outbreak and all the larger implications and larger issues around um, violence and uh, climate disruption, but also the opportunities of stepping forward in a, a different way of, of living. Um, and uh, thank you again for the invitation. Wonderful to see you. Thank you for being here and your tremendous work. And you know, Yes Magazine has been a powerful inspiration for millions of people. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Nina, hello. Please say hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, hi, uh, my name's Nina Strike, and uh, I am the executive director of the Global Peace Film Festival um, and met Avon when I first started it back in 2003. Um, and because of the pandemic this year, rather than being live in Orlando and Central Florida, um, which is where it's been every year until this year, it's going to be virtual. And among the, it starts on September 21st on the International Day of Peace. We've always um, anchored the festival around the week of the International Day of Peace. The festival runs for a week this year because of, because it's going to be virtual. It's going to be two weeks long, so it will run through October 4th. And um, as somebody mentioned, the Meta Center, um, Michael Nagler is uh, just finishing up a film that we're going to be one of the first um, places for that film to be seen um, called The Third Harmony. Um, so I hope um, many of you will want to um, follow us. I'll put the in, uh, the website in the chat box, and thank you for thank you for this wonderful get together. Oh, thank you. Great to see you, Nina. Thank you very much. And Jennifer, uh, Mar yes, hello, Jennifer. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Um, my name is Jennifer Morrow. I'm pretty new to to Pathways. Um, I was asked to be part of the CSW sixty four a couple months ago. I um, was really looking forward to going to the UN, uh, but we did, we did it online, which was just as fantastic. Um, I see a lot of my presenters I met with, I mean, for the first time, Renor and Deborah and Katie and good to see you guys. Um, I got involved through George Anthony, actually. Um, I'm a journalist. I've been a, a worked in secular journalism for about 15 years. I uh, just got tired of that negativity and um, started working for a Catholic organization and now I'm the, the editor of a Catholic magazine in Trenton, New Jersey. Um, and that's how I met George. I went with him to the UN to report on his students at Modern Day Prep uh, when they, they went to the United Nations to present. And, um, and ever since then, uh, just been involved through there and uh, just excited to hopefully continue working with with Tez and, and meeting uh, uh, everybody else for the first time online, David and, and, and everyone. So yeah, that's it. Wonderful. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks. Um, and the gentleman, <clears throat> V-A-L-U-S-I-F-O-H, please. Hello. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, as Mr. Jua told you, we, we are from Nigeria. Uh, we're joining this community for the first time. It's a very, very wonderful experience. Uh, like everyone said earlier, we had been representing uh, ETP in Geneva some years back. And uh, we've learned so much. Uh, for us, this session, uh, getting together is a learning curve, uh, hearing from different perspectives, people working in their various fields for peace. So I thank you, I thank everyone and everyone for this opportunity and we hope one day we will see you. Uh, we're all locked down here. <laughs> thank you. Indeed. Well, beautiful, and thank you very much, and, and thank you for the work that you've done. Great to see you here. Thank you. And um, Mr. Uh, Chris Kelly, hello. Are you there, sir? 
Un unmute. Unmute. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. I have virtual office hours, so that's <laughs> in and out. I'm teaching a course uh, called Change Makers, um, and so it's uh, very apropos. Um, we've been learning about uh, teaching young people from the civil rights movement. Um, and this year, you know, we learned about John Lewis two days before he passed, uh, Dr. Vivian two days before he passed. So it's been very moving for the young people who are mostly um, children of color uh, in the uh, city university system, uh, involved in the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, so the conflict resolution skills uh, as a conflict resolution specialist, uh, have come into play, uh, teaching Gandhian and King principles and Pathways to Peace um, principles to young people involved in the Black Lives Matter movement uh, has been so fulfilling. Uh, and seeing them make the intergenerational connections is just, you know, I think it's what we're all, what we're all about. Um, my involvement with Pathways to Peace has been for many years uh, tangentially by uh, being the co-founder of the Institute for International Leadership, Nonviolence, and Service, and bringing our young people to the United Nations for the pathway uh, for the International Day of Peace uh, celebrations with George Anthony for many, many years, and it's it's changed their lives. And now um, some of them are teachers. Uh, I had one uh, zoom into one of our lessons uh, who spoke at the United Nations uh, at one of those events, um, and so. Uh, Avon has always been so inspirational. Just quick phone calls with her uh, on the line has just made things possible that she will never know how much, you know, hopefully she's hearing <laughs> how much it inspired. Um, we took on getting all the buses a couple of years ago from the Northeast to Washington, D.C. for the March on Washington for the anti gun uh, violence uh, that became the biggest March on Washington uh, of the modern era. And quick phone call with Ava and George on there uh, really made me think what we were doing was, was possible. Um, so the inspiration that we get from this community is just so important. Um, currently, we're, um, I used to be the lead educator for American Civil Rights Educational Services, and we're currently trying to get that up again to connect young people to travel uh, when that's possible, and now virtually connect them to the civil rights leaders of the, of the John Lewis, Dr. King era. Uh, and I'm co-chair of the Gandhi King Season for Nonviolence uh, here in New York, uh, which used to be the sister event to the International Day of Peace um, here. And uh, uh, for a lot of years, it was sort of uh, taking a dip. <laughs> and uh, we were on track to have the largest attendance uh, from all around the tri-state area. And we had to postpone two weeks. We were about to go two weeks before New York shut down. Um, and the young people had prepared such amazing presentations. So, you know, we're just gonna open that up to the community. And, and if we need to take a virtual, we'll, we'll take a virtual. If we can be in person, we'll be in person. Um, thanks. Thank you so much for all your support and, and, and love. It, mean, it means the world to, to all of us, I think, as a community. Beautiful. Thank you so much, and thank you for your deep work there. Great. And Sylvia, hello. Hi. Um, I know no one, and I guess I'm the biggest interloper here because uh, this is my first exposure to Pathways for Peace, and I feel like I am really out of my league listening to all the fantastic, <laughs> wonderful things you've done in history and on and on and on. Uh, but it sounds like something that I would like to be involved with. I'm basically... Uh, I teach at a community college and I teach interpersonal communication and inter intercultural communication. And so my, my slant is that, you know, it all starts from within and uh, what you're putting out there as far as um, keeping the peace, promoting the peace and within yourself, it starts within. Absolutely. So, uh, that's as much as I can say because I'm just overwhelmed by what I'm hearing. <laughs> well, welcome and absolutely uh, stay tuned and uh, keep in, we'll have a part two coming up next Friday, same time. So join in and you can be part of this for sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, Meryl, great. Thank you. Thank you, Merrill. Hello, Merrill. We can't hear you. Meryl, you disappeared. Oh, Davis, she just left, unfortunately. Okay, so, and um, um, Monica. I'll just speak about Meryl. Meryl, 
Meryl um, uh, was the composer in residence at Pathways to Peace starting in the, uh, in the early 80s. And there was a, a program under Pathways to Peace that was called the, uh, the Culture Peace Education Program. And she had something called the Lashkey Children's Chorus with, um, with uh, at-risk students in Oakland. And they created their own music and songs and they eventually, we found a way to get them to the United Nations to make a presentation to the, um, to the Commission on, on Human Rights. And, and the, the song had to do with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Right, so absolutely. Um, and Monica Willard, she's in Sweden. She had to leave because her battery ran out, but she's a, a deep, deep. Oh, that, that, was Monica, that was Monica Miller Elder. She, um, she, when she was in the United States, she served as um, an in integral part of the work of Pathways to Peace um, in, in many, many levels and just was a profound influence of intergenerational peace building. Right, absolutely. So let us move ahead. Anyone that did not uh, speak, did we miss anybody? I think we covered. Excellent. Well, let us move ahead then. Um, the next piece here is just a brief um, about some of the things that the history of Pathways and things we've done. Then we're going to take a look at some of the current things that we're engaged in. So, uh, Avon, please uh, proceed. Well, while I switch uh, to to another another screen on my little iPhone, <clears throat> I just wanted to build on what was being spoken of with John Lewis before. Um, the final essay that he asked to have uh, published on the day of his funeral was the following. Though I may not be here with you, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. Um, words to inspire us all. Let me just switch to what I'm focusing on here. <clears throat> I'm just going to be very, very brief with this, but to say that... Um, Pathways to Peace worked uh, once the United Nations established the International Day of Peace in 1981, which was so much inspired by Ambassador John McDonald and our very beloved um, Dr. Robert or Robert Mueller, the Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations, <laughs> and, um, and so many others. And so Pathways to Peace began working with the uh, worldwide, helping to build worldwide recognition and participation in this Universal Peace Day and building cooperation amongst very diverse organizations and programs and networks. Uh, now it is, has become a worldwide movement of, that is self-organizing and the most, um, most extraordinary movement of peace building through all these many diverse ways, including peace through social justice. Um, also, Pathways Peace worked with colleagues at the UN to see if we could establish, and the UN could establish a field called peace building, which it finally did, because the primary fields of peace building were known as peacekeeping and peacemaking. But peace building is the one that includes civil society and what each one of us is doing on a daily basis. Um, with, uh, with, uh, this has to do with, with Paul and Konomi, but, um, with the UN climate summits in 1992 and Rio plus 20 and 2012, we had an intergenerational delegation, including indigenous representatives who made presentations on climate activism and solutions and showing the demonstration between, uh, peace through climate justice social justice, racial injustice, and all of that aspects. Um, and so those were in both of those UN climate summits. And Paul, you were involved with the 2012 one. And, um, and we won't go into that, but that was a very much where you represented the Paul Coleman project in that of planting trees and walking a very, very long distance. So anyway, um, we, uh, David, if you could go into the uh, into CPI and PWO? Yes, okay. Um, in uh, 1985, uh, I was working at Stanford University and we held a symposium at Stanford University 
and it was about the nexus point, the joining point, meeting point of corporations and business and peace and peace building. And it was such a powerful experience from, and they had an amazing gathering of people there. It was such a powerful experience. They said, let's do this again. So that became a series, it actually a 10 year series of peace within organizations. And it was people from many different you know, businesses and corporations, and, but around peace building, what does it look like? What does it look like within organizations? And as was mentioned earlier, it all begins with the individual person. But that became something that many of you have been, you know, were part of that. Um, something that became a strong influence in other people and what they continued on in their, in their lives. So Peace Within Organizations was uh, 1985 to 1995. Um, and then part of the, as David mentioned, the, the Pathways was really, was noted for being a culture peace initiative and um, looking at how to bring the culture peace into the world in many different ways through a newsletter and many different activities. And um, <clears throat> when I, I came to uh, Ashland in 19, uh, 2003 and bringing the Pathways work and experience was a culture peace initiative uh, uh, at Ashland. And so that was a foundation, a basis of starting the Ashland Culture Peace Commission, which works with the entire community, with the city in many different ways around peace building and, uh, and the culture of peace. And it's really taken root for this, it's really changed the community in, in that. So that was the basis of that. Back to you, Avon. Well, I'm just gonna quickly go over four decades. <laughs> One of our important programs, and I wish that um, Michael Johnson could still be here, uh, could have made it on the call, and that uh, George Anthony, who didn't, uh, is all very humble, but he serves as our primary UN representative and has been involved, not only as a master uh, peace teacher um, at the school that he works with modern day, but also um, bringing youth to the United Nations. Anyway, for, uh, for over four decades uh, now, we've been, uh, providing opportunities to learn more about the United Nations, also engaged uh, with present UN conferences and past conferences with UN representatives and delegates. They've included refugees, indigenous youth, and elders and others whose views and voices are rarely, if ever, heard. So we're very grateful to our PTP primary UN representatives over all these years. Another a program has been um, Oh, there's one that I'm forgetting, but that's all right, um, because we're, we want to conserve our time for what is emerging. And then POTSHIM, which is a, a program called um, POTSHIM stands for Peace as Consulting, Educating, and Mentoring. And it mentors um, emerging and next generation, especially youth peace leaders from diverse circumstances and countries, and that continues to the present. And so with that, uh, we will, we will go on to our next segment. Yes, so thank you. So Pathways, as has been expressed, has done a lot, a lot, a lot over these years. Foundation to many people who became peace leaders and also organizations, which are now engaging you know, globally in many ways. So we want to take a look at what we're doing today. What are some of the current things that we're doing? And then we'll move to the future and, what, uh, and getting your, your input. Um, so, Tezekiah, please. Thank you. Well, I'm just honored and delighted to be able to give just a snapshot of uh, the activities, programs, and what we've been about over the last two years. And so, um, I want to begin by saying that my goal in coming in was really to build on the Pathways to Peace uh, history of, of innovation collaboration and movement building. And of course, there was a huge uh, platform to take into the future. So I'm gonna briefly bullet out some of those pieces, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Deborah to talk about uh, some of the very exciting things that are moving forward. So as you've heard, uh, we've been very present at the United Nations, uh, not only attending, but also presenting workshops. 
and we've been present in many of those endeavors over the course of the last three years. Uh, in all of our work, we're about supporting what I call next generation peace builders. Uh, those are the young peace builders who remind me every day that wisdom isn't counted in years. And we have several of those next gen peace builders on the call with us today. They are doing amazing work at the United Nations as well as in peace building overall. Uh, we've got our toes in the very relevant issues of peace through justice. One of the current things that's occurring is um, it are, uh, a whole series of interviews with Rich Sheely around ending racism as healing. Um, Paul, I thought about Rich as you were speaking. So these are called Healing Talks. They're every Monday. It is a seven session series um, and we are down to two left. Uh, they are at 9.30, uh, 9.30, no, I'm sorry, 10.30 um, Pacific time. Rich and I are both in the central daylight time so they're at 12.30 to 1, only 30 minutes. Rich has a beautiful approach to removing racism as a barrier to optimizing our human potential and coming together as one. Uh, peace through disarmament. And Renor talked about the work that he's doing. He's actually chairing a committee for the conference that he spoke briefly about. And Batsabe has been joining that effort as well. Uh, they're both amazing and are doing amazing things around global initiatives to be able to bring peace through disarmament. Um, the Culture of Peace initiatives, you know about Ashland. There are two other Culture of Peace initiatives in various stages of evolution. One is the Culture of Peace in Malawi um, through uh, Masako Bandu, who is one of our council members. The other is one I'm leading in, which is the Culture of Peace initiative, Twin Cities. And that's in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. We're very involved in uh, the upcoming events to celebrate Peace Day. Um, as always, there's lots to do. And one of those large events that you'll be hearing more about is with uh, Unity and the Sign Network. Um, and we're in continued collaboration around local and global initiatives. So that's just a brief bulleted list of some of the things we're working with. And there are subsets underneath each one of those. So um, we're very actively engaged in advancing the mission of Pathways to Peace. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Deborah Green. Deborah Green is known as the peace traveler. And over the course of the past three years, Deborah has been an active member of the Pathways to Peace team. She's brought her incredible talent, her energy, and her presence to the planning and implementation of many of the programs that I've just identified. Currently, among other initiatives, Deborah has developed a timely and relevant peace initiative, which is titled Hashtag My Mask is for You. Uh, Hashtag My Mask is for You is a program of peace traveler in partnership with Pathways to Peace. Deborah? Um, Thank you, and pardon for me not being visual. I know it's one of the greatest things about Zoom is we get to see in each other's <laughs> eyes, and when you're in a boardroom, sometimes you miss those moments, and now we get them, but I'm traveling and my internet's a little funky, so I didn't want, I, that's why my name was up. So um, thank you very much. Um, The concept of a culture of peace, I just want to back it up a second. The concept of a culture of peace has to do with actions that we each take, yes? And 
one of the things that we've been talking about, especially over the last couple of years, is how do we bring that into everything that we're doing so that all of our initiatives help shift us to creating a culture of peace, that these actions are a culture of peace. Um, and one of the bizarre parts of, of the COVID situation we're in is the action that is required in order for us to survive is the action of caring for somebody else uh, even above ourselves. You know, it's, if you talk to um, uh, people in the medical field, the reason why other uh, diseases are, have, may have been easier to contain is because it's very obvious when somebody has it, you can put them away or the host pa unfortunately passes away. This disease puts us right at the cutting edge of needing to learn how to care for each other. And uh, that's where the concept of my mask is for you started and be started at the beginning of April. Um, and I wouldn't mind actually showing some visuals that might help uh, so you can see where we're going with this campaign and why it works so well with Pathways to Peace and also how other organizations can get involved. Can I share my screen, Taz? Yes. And we have three minutes. Deborah, you should be able to, please, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. So this was the beginning of the concepts of My Mask is for You. And we started, and as with everything that I have been working on, I'm always looking for a way to bring it back to Pathways to Peace and find a way that any of the work that I can do can support Pathways to Peace's vision as well as to support it monetarily. So that's why when I started working on this campaign, I kept looking for ways in which I can bring energy back to Pathways to Peace and everything that I'm doing. So um, we started with some conversations where we actually were talking with students from different generations as well as some um, uh, uh, teachers and physicians. We're going to continue these conversations, which I think is really important. And as I said, we keep gearing it back towards pathways to peace and the concepts around a culture of peace. So here are a couple of things that have happened. I've connected with um, charity. Charity is an organization where you can put, and it's, and this is something that they were worked really tightly with us in order to make it um, cost effective, but you can go on and through charity.org and through share.mymaskisforyou.org, you can put up the image, your image and share it. And again, this brings energy back to Pathways to Peace. We've also created masks where we are now gonna be selling. This is our, just our summer versions, you know, because they're a little lighter weight um, and they're going to be available online. So please do look at My Mask is For You. And then we also have um, new versions that we're working with different um, cities, like small villages or schools where we can put their logo on the corner with this concept of my mask is for you. And by the way, you wear it with a smile and I, people have a different response to it. And perhaps we can shift the conversation to my, you know, that I'm doing this for you as well. So what I'm offering to Pathways and with Pathways is that any organization that gets involved, you know, the pro proceeds get split and no matter what, Pathways gets a portion. So we're, again, as I say, giving to the mothership of these ideas of the culture of peace. But I'm also working with artists on different types of masks because we also have masks for students that are adjustable on the side so that you can do them with teachers and students and I have a couple of organizations and, and companies, I've been doing a lot of research, who are now willing to give us really low prices and, and perhaps if we get many multiple organizations involved, again, we can shift the conversation. Um, I th the one thing that I wanna to leave us with is this, is that the Peace Traveler thing is because I sat and traveled around the country and interviewed hundreds of people before the last election. 
ended up with close to a thousand interviews in 40 states. And now I'm going back and interviewing those same people, but from a distance. This is the conversation that needs to have, which is how do we shift the conversation to being one of unity and the action of wearing a mask being one of I support you. And the final thing that I'd like to say, and I don't know how to unshare my screen, otherwise I would get back to everybody. <laughs> how come I'm not doing that? There you go. Good. I just started traveling and as I was traveling, I went to Jiffy Lube. And the gentleman who came up to me, a young man came up without a mask. And I asked him very kindly, I said, sir, sir, 18 year old, sir, please put on a mask. He said, yeah, I got one. Came back with a mask on and said, my opinion is it's um, survival of the fittest. And that's where the conversation needs to shift because it's not about whether he's putting himself in risk. It's about, are you saying because I am immune compromised, I don't have the right to be protected by you. And how do we shift those conversations? So anybody who's interested in becoming a part of this, either by creating these masks that we would love to help you, or being a part of these ongoing conversations that we'll have every week, please get in contact. And um, this is just one of the programs that Tez and I have been working on over the, the last year to, again, bring the energy to pathways as doing something very conscious and, and relevant in the moment. And thank you. Beautiful, Deborah. Thank you so much. And uh, in these times, I always say, you know, perhaps one of the best expressions of caring and compassion for ourselves and others is to wear a mask, which is a peace building tenant. So thank you so much, Deborah, for all your amazing work. Very definitely. So that gives you a, 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 an idea as to where we've been, you know, some of the things that we're engaged in. And the what is very important is getting your input, your inspirations um, of, you know, where we see pathways going, what are, the, what are the really important things we engage in as, you know, in contributing to our strategic planning. Um, and so at this point, what we'll do is invite you to three different ways. One is to, if you had something, a link or something you want to put into the chat box, you can do that now. The other is sending any information input to Tezakaya at tez at uh, pathwaystopeace.org. And the third, and we, everyone is invited to um, uh, next week, Friday, uh, August 21st, same time, 9.30 to 11, we'll have a part two where you all are all invited to be there and where we can really, you know, open up and have discussion and have your input, your ideas, uh, conversation around the next evolution here. We've got some things we got going, but it's a longer term. And also, this is the intergenerational. This is a time of, of transferring you know, pathways from us who've been, you know, doing this for decades to the next generation, you know, and it's moving forward in, in its role and influence. So we want to have that conversation with you. What makes sense? And what's the foundation that we're going to build upon for the next, you know, you know millennium? Um, so it's a vital time. So those are the three ways that we invite you to, again, engage and perhaps between now and next week, give that some thought and to really say, okay, what makes sense? What are the high level needs? And, and I would just say, from my experience with the Ash and Cultural Peace Commission, it begins obviously with the individual. With the individual, it's within the family, within the, our schools, within the business. It's also within the cult community. We're working with the city council, the mayor, the, you know, every part of this city, and actually Southern Oregon, and it's also international, it's local, global, but doing things that really have high impact and high leverage. So what are those things that you would engage you in with Pathways Further? So please, uh, Tezekiah, next steps. Yes. Well, you set a beautiful foundation for me on this one. And that is just that, of course, 
as we uh, begin to plan for the next evolution of Pathways to Peace, we come to you as key stakeholders, you who have had a huge investment or have a huge investment in the next evolution of Pathways to Peace. So we'd like to open up and say that there are many opportunities to inform the future of Pathways. And if you feel called in any way that I hope that you will contact me. Again, it's Tez, T-E-Z, at pathwaystopeace.org. All lowercase, all one word. And just some examples are if you'd like to provide additional input into the planning process, we'd love to hear about that. You could put it in the chat box now, or you can email me, or as David said, you can come on to our next call. Secondly, perhaps you've got an interest in becoming a planning team member. What that means is that you would be assisting Pathways to Peace in shaping and informing that strategic plan for the next evolution. If you're interested in that, please let us know. Also, you might be interested in being a program advisor or an organizational advisor, if you aren't already. I know some of you are, um, but we'd love to have you engaged at that level. Um, and then lastly, we have openings on our Council of Directors, which is the governing body of Pathways to Peace. If you have an interest in being a candidate for our council, uh, we'd love to hear from you about that too. And so please don't be limited by those four requests. Um, if you have another idea how you could contribute to Pathways to Peace, uh, we invite you to uh, get back to us in one way, shape, or form with that information. We'd love to work with you and engage with you further. Um, and then lastly, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that we'd love also for you to support us financially. If you're able to do that, if you feel called to do that, we'd love to have your contribution in our work to continue building peace locally and globally. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Avon, for our, our conclusion. <clears throat> well, I, um, I'm looking forward to our follow-on call where everyone can share what is arising for them and what they're contributing already to build greater cooperation and support for one another. Um, I'm very deeply touched by what everyone has said, and I, I just want to reiterate that what, what Pathways to Peace has accomplished and will continue to accomplish is basically because of what every one of you has already contributed and brought your expertise, your wisdom, and your initiative and creativity to Pathways to Peace. This is a, this is a group endeavor, a community endeavor and doesn't belong to anyone. And that's, I think, what is the power of the real work of Pathways to Peace is that um, we're all part of the, uh, of the circle of co-creators in this particular way. And the other part I would add is um, that the, we are being called to, as uh, John Lewis said, to follow our hearts and to, to be able to add whatever we are adding and our own particular gifts to this world in ways that are still unprecedented but are needed more than ever. And that the future doesn't, isn't revealed completely at this time. We don't know what the future holds. But what I do know is that through the contribution of every one of you and so many others around the world that often carry the name of the new group of world servers are truly coming together in ways that are unprecedented, sometimes because of the COVID crisis and the other crises, to be able to connect through Zoom and technology and meditation and many other ways <clears throat> that are 
being able to establish the seeds of the new culture of peace that are beneficial to all life, of which we humanity is one part. So I just end again with a bow of love and gratitude to each one of you. And as uh, Fumi has spread the word of, and comes from Biako Shinko Kai and the, and the may peace prevail on earth, may peace prevail on earth. And if there are any final comments that anyone wants to add, please, please feel free to do so now. Yeah, I'll share a thought, and this has been great. Um, a, a, a small little story. In, in 1995, <laughs> I got a phone call from our client and said, the United Nations 50th anniversary is coming up in 10 days, and we need you to create a film to depict the vision, the mission, and the meaning of the signing of the Charter of the UN. And I said, sure, you can write a script, but don't have the moral authority. So I asked to look at the preamble to the UN's charter. And it was right there when it said, we, the people of the United Nations, determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has caused untold sorrow to mankind, and to reaffirm faith in the fundamental principles of men and women and nations large and small. And it went on from there. And I guess you had to have World War II to inspire those words, but we used it as the script and we recorded it in English, French, Spanish, Arabic, Russian, and Chinese and everything. So listening to all these conversations and with the commitment to the United Nations, what worked for the film in 1995, I feel listening to all of this, those words are more true than ever and more important than ever. And um, I just wanted to share that little story. So. Beautiful, thank you, Fred. Beautifully said. Anyone else like to have a concluding expression, thought? Yeah, uh, George Anthony here. Uh, I just want to sort of recognize, give a shout out to my older brother who's uh, on this, uh, my peace brother, Lindy Crescitelli, uh, who's on this call as well. Um, that we, we um, Lindy is a consular professional who's been with me for the last 25 years, truly believing in young people as, as the bridge to, to tomorrow. And um, I just want to say that uh, one of my favorite things, uh, two things, we are forever remembered by the tracks that we leave. Uh, great believers, Pathways to Peace has been such a profound bridge builder to peace for so many organizations and so many young people. Uh, and I could not be proud of being a part of such a great organization. And I look forward to the next two or three years. And uh, we, the, the programs that are coming up in the next year are going to truly shape uh, much of what we do. And um, again, being a part of this organization is such a blessing. So uh, I look forward to the next meeting and uh, sharing some of the projects that we're doing. And if you have any questions, again, reach out to myself, to Lindy, uh, or to any of the young ladies on, on the call today, Emma or Elizabeth. And again, visit us at Prep for Peace, uh, which is in, uh, a site developed at Madre Prep, showing what young people can do. God bless you all, and uh, I look forward to seeing you live, one person, at the uh, next meeting. Thank you, George, for being our primary UN representative and, bringing, and teaching and bringing all these young people to the United Nations. And we would love to hear all, all that you've been doing. That can be a very important part of what is emerging. Thank you, Avon. God bless you. Your spirit is just unwavering and inspiring. <laughs> Beautiful. Great, George. Anyone else, please? Uh, so um, this is Roland. I want to give you one quick uh, image from sports. This is a relay baton. And what I love about this reunion, it's an opportunity to shine the light on some of us who've been carrying something of value, you know, for a long, long time and doing our part. And what we're doing right now with Pathways to Peace is learning how to pass the baton to the next generation. And you will take it places we have never been. And we need to learn how to speak in your language. And we ask for your help uh, to learn how to pass this baton of wisdom uh, effectively to you. So thank you all. Woohoo! Yay, we got it. 
If I can say a few words, uh, uh, first, Marilyn, thank you for what you just shared. Um, but I also will say that it is very nice. Um, it's it's very needed, I feel, to have uh, this intergenerational approach in which you're just uh, shared in your own unique way. Um, and um, I, I do hope that we can um, form a, more of a community, uh, uh, um, on an organizational level where uh, we have these initiatives that we all know about. Because I, I, I just heard about some beautiful brand new things from some of you that you're working on within PTP. Um, and of course, there's some in PTP who I've never met before. So I'm still kind of like the newbie here um, and just kind of like, oh, what's this? And who's this? And <laughs> <laughs> but I will say from a humble perspective, uh, it is very humbling. And it is also extremely inspiring. But I, I, uh, I look forward to walking forward with all of you um, together, side by side. Um, instead of behind me, I want you beside me. Um, because that's how I will learn the best. That's how my fellow young um, peers will learn the best when you're here beside me. Um, and, um, I'm looking forward to, uh, just, a, a, a beautiful emergence of this new, uh, stage of growth and evolution that Pathways to Peace is embarking on. So I'm here committed and grateful. Thank you. Mm, beautiful. Thank you very much. Anyone else? I would like to say something as like a young representative of Pathways to Peace coming into this um, all new for um, quite some time. Meeting with all you people today is very, very inspiring to me because I've been wanting to doing this since I was six years old. I had all my whole path set, wanted to become president when I was, when I was older. And now being here with all of you guys, it's making me feel like special and wanted with all of you guys because sometimes others can't be accepted for who they are, but I feel like in here I could be accepted for who I am. And I can't wait to share what projects I would be working on with Mr. Anthony and the School of Modern Day Prep in the next meeting. Beautiful. Thank you, Emma. Anyone else? I'll just say that each of our voices are so needed now. All of our work is so needed now at a time of high anxiety and fear. I think this is such an opportune time to build on everything Pathways has done, uh, to keep expanding the work we're doing individually. We can be much more powerful when we work together. So we are a collective, different ages, different backgrounds, and it's that collective wisdom, that collective experience, that collective, you know, desire that's going to keep making us powerful. So I'm just grateful for this community, and I look forward to continuing the conversation. Beautiful. Thank you, Kim. Deep work to you. Thank you. I would just like to add that um, I interviewed Emma, I think two years ago for the Monitor newspaper, and she also told me that she wanted to be president then. So let's keep an eye on this one. I think we got a peacemaker here. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Others? Hi, this is Betsy Bay here. I, I'm commuting, commuting now, but I just want to say, you know, backpacking off of what Renor said, I'm extremely extremely grateful for this and as he said um you know working beside each other is what my heart has always desired for pathways to peace and so having this come to life has been the most um heartwarming experience i guess you can say for me um in my path with pathways to peace so i'm just grateful i'm grateful for Avon, Tezekiah, and honestly everyone here um, in contributing in such different ways, but such amazing ways uh, to the world. So just thank you again. And I look forward to Friday and, and moving forward beside and along with each other. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. Well, we have gone beyond our, our original time. And um, so we just want to conclude. And Tezekiah? 
I just wanted to say, because it's so important to give credit where credit is due, that it was Renor and Betsabe that said, we need to know this community. It's time to have a gathering. And so, and so thank you, thank you, thank you for such wisdom that you both uh, brought forward and for the outcome that we've all enjoyed. And just a, a couple of reminders. Um, uh, we will put out another newsletter, but know that on August 21st, at the same time, which is a Friday, we'll be coming back together with the same, in the same Zoom room. So please, we hope you'll come back for that deeper level discussion, uh, sharing about your work, uh, doing some networking and providing some input into the next evolution of Pathways to Peace. And lastly, that if we have your email, we will get out to you the chat. We can copy what's in the chat and get it out to you. So you haven't lost anything with all those beautiful links. So thank you for allowing me to be a part of this amazing gathering. Beautiful. May peace prevail on earth. Good day.